check, check.
check, check. Check, check. Check, check. Check, check, check.
I'd like to call the meeting of June 9th, 2021, to order at 6.01. And for the Pledge of Allegiance, would our uh, Anthony Small lead us? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have a roll call of commissioners? Commissioner Banks? Present. Commissioner Small? Present. Commissioner Jenkins? Present. For the record, uh, all commissioners are present with one commissioner Jenkins absent. No. I, I mean, um, Schnell absent. I'm sorry. Commissioner Schne Schnell is absent. Thank you. <laughs> Let's move on to the approval of the minutes. The arts cultural meeting the minutes were from April 14th, 2021. We either have any corrections or would somebody like to uh, make. Do we vote on that? Okay. Commissioner Banks? Yes. Commissioner Small? Yes. Vice Chair Jenkins? Yes. By consensus, this motion passes 3-0. We're going to go to the next section of the public comments. Any person wishing to address the Arts and Cultural Commission during the public comment section or on an agenda item is asked to complete a request to speak from form available on the table within the City Council conference room. The completed form is to be submitted to the secretary prior to the agenda item being called by the chair and prior to the individual being heard by the Arts and Cultural Commission. In order to conduct a timely manner, there will be a three minute time limit per person and an overall time limit of 15 minutes for the public comment portion of the agenda. At the chair's discretion, the balance of public comments will be heard after the new business section portion of the agenda. All comments are to be, will be heard after the Cultural Commission and shall not consist of any personal tax. Member of the public are expected to maintain a professional courteous decorum during their comments. State law prohibits the Arts and Cultural Commission from taking action on a specific item unless it appears on the posted agenda. If anyone has handouts to distribute, um, we'll follow the proper procedure and give them to Diane. So since you're on here and we have, okay, go ahead. Yes, we have a public comment. Thank you. The public comment is on uh, Dana Yarger from Dana Point is going to speak on the elephant parade. And since it's also on the agenda as well as on the public comments, can we move item um, five up? Do we need to vote on that? Okay, so we'll talk about, okay. thank you. Welcome, Dana. Oh, thank you. There it is. So what is the rules? I have three minutes or are we going through this item five through the handout I gave you? Okay. Okay. Well, I presented to you uh, this evening kind of a, a summary of what happened seven or eight years ago with the Elephant Parade. There's a lot more detail that I think you, you all know about the 250,000 people that came and the success of that project. Uh, this is what we're calling Encore for the Elephants, and its spirit was to try to bring back tourism to Dana Point 
try to have an attraction, uh, a low budget, easily to implement. And in my own way of thinking, a thank you to the resorts because they funded the first one and this is a way to get people back into Dana Point. I will also tell you that it's not just about the elephant. It's about creating a platform on which Dana Point can be a host to an annual or biannual public art attracting exhibition that we can use as we did last time, our parks, our communities, our beautiful vistas in a way differing from and expanding on what happens in Laguna Beach each summer where reportedly a million people come to visit that all have an arts appetite and we get a way to attract some of those people to come here without being just another tented art fair, but for people to visit the extremes of Dana Point. This project, while some people would say, been there, done that, it is still new to thousands of people who didn't see the elephants the first time. And to, for those people to review the elephants a second time is a great joy. And about half of the collection will all be new elephants anyway. How did we happen to have some elephants already? Elephant Parade, when it left Dana Point, the plan was for our Elephant Parade, the international organization, to enter North America, the American market, and tour the elephants but Elephant Parade organization based in the Netherlands had an offer from Hong Kong to have the next exhi exhibition there. So the international organization left the United States and since then has been in three cities in China, has been in three cities in Brazil, has been in multiple venues in Europe, most recently in Spain, and two weeks ago had an exhibition in Southampton in the UK, also a national tour of the UK. When we thought about bringing the Elephant Parade back to the United States, I contacted them partly after their exhibition in Dubai to say I was aware of that. And Elephant Parade International is interested in returning to the United States. And if they would so choose, they might choose Dana Point as a restart point. But this proposal at this time is only about the existing elephants that I preserved from the at, at the end of Elephant Parade in 2014, thinking a national tour would happen. So elephants went into storage, waiting for a time to come back out. So Encore for the, this, this handout I've given you shows some of the people that were involved, some of the excitement of the, of the children and the families that were involved, and an overview of how a much less uh, uh, much reduced logistics can be achieved uh, in, in Dana Point. So I appreciate if you look through the brochure and if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Dana, um, yes, who Marie. bears the expense of bringing the elephants and putting them out to display? Do you get the um, what do you call it, the resorts involved, or is there a cost to it? There is no cost to the city. It'll be done with private funding and volunteers. Some volunteers have stepped forward already. We have one local construction company that's agreed to do some of the remanufacturing of pedestals, another construction company to do the installation, all uh, pro bono. Uh, the resorts sent me an email well, uh, visit Dana Point. Rachel, I've forgotten her last name at the moment. Rachel sent me an email saying the resorts are not interested in participating in this project at this time. I thought it was a little premature because I hadn't even asked them to participate. But we will go forward and ask the resorts if they would like to host an elephant or two like they did last time. And they would be bearing none of the expense. But conversation is still yet to be held for prospective participants and sponsors. Yesterday, we got an offer from an in-kind sponsor who will place uh, QR codes on all the elephants, and they have an application that people can upload if they, uh, they uh, take the picture. Well, I think we all can agree that QR codes have come back because of touchless. You know, I mean, the millennials dropped it, and but now everybody has to have it back, I, I believe, a little bit. And this particular application will allow every visitor, if they use it, to upload their image, whatever picture they might take, to the, the, the company's platform. And those 
images can be aggregated if people want to participate into a mosaic, like maybe you've seen at a sporting event where hundreds or thousands of photos are all put together in, in a, like a mural. And that mosaic then would be overlaid with the words uh, Dana Point. So it'd be a souvenir of their visit for the whole, uh, 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 the whole parade. So an interactive program they could enjoy to elect to participate or not. How many elephants do you have or expect to have? Our target is still 25. We have almost 20, 18 to 20 now. But as we begin to count the ones that the city already owns, and we begin to count the ones that are already at the Laguna Cliffs Resort, and I've reached out to uh, Sparky, what's his name? I forgot, Longley, who owns uh, Ra uh, Rainbow Sandals. And he has one in their office in, in uh, San Clemente. We could add that. There are some elephants that were not shown in the last exhibition. One is currently in the library at um, Ladera Ranch. Uh, and there are a couple others around that we could bring back in or the decision still to evolve, we could leave them in their destinations, include them in their map, and therefore include a broader community than just the concentration in Dana Point. If that, did I make that point? We could, you know, we could add other communities by citing where the other elephants are. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? So um, you put down on one of the agenda items, you wanted to know how the city could participate. Instead, <coughs> instead of a formal, organization, the city? Could individuals in the city contact you and help to be on a committee to do different work? Well, we look for volunteers. Everybody is stressed for time and funds. You know, everybody's welcome. I'd like, you know, some announcement to go out that the volunteers can, you know, uh, um, raise their hands now. I do believe that some people will come forward. I just finished a conversation also with a website designer that might be supported by one of our uh, other local organizations that has has a website. So we're, this this time around, it'll be much more community participation than the first time. It was kind of more industrial and driven by the resorts and their ad agency. In fact, at this time, we have reserved four elephants that are still blank looking for uh, <clears throat> Dana Point or Dana Point area influencer artists to uh, create these elephants. They may not all be done by the, the projected launch date of the end of July. And the end of July is really uh, uh, an artificial deadline, artificial start date. It, its intention was, for uh, the community to collaborate and get some attention such that we could get as much attention and attract those visitors to Laguna Beach. Frankly, we're just, that's part of the agenda. We could obviously move it to our, uh, August. We could move it to September. Uh, the information I have from the city, I think in an official uh, capacity, is that they have agreed to provide the identification of public property upon which the elephants could sit, and also uh, to add the project to the existing insurance policies. I think that you could go on forever and ever, because you have um, so many ideas, and I think we have a real interest here. I think that's why we put this on the agenda. So we'll contact you personally okay. for further information. How does that sound, Kelly? Uh, that sounds fine. I think, Dana, you you um, uh, hit the nail on the head that, yeah, the city is available to provide public property to the okay. spaces that you identify and certainly with our add you to insurance. Right. I think Thanks that's so much. And some photo absolutely um, uh, totally possible to do that. So. May I, I'd like to add one more thing about, and I think I stated in the beginning, but I emphasize, you know, this is a whale town. We know that. But this is a community of arts and culture. So I look at this project again. I want to reemphasize that if we can get the, the platform done, we can get the logistics done, we know how to do this, then next year, whatever the popular feeling is, whether it be whales or dolphins or sea turtles or whatever in the following year or so the history of california may be based on 
courses and things. There are things that can be done each year that'll be novel, be interesting. We could even do giant beach chairs. Obviously, we could do guitars. We could do things music related. As long as we understand that the arts and culture wants to bring the community together to look at art regardless of the canvas that it's on. Thank you, I think. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. All right, let's go back to item two. The utility box call for artists. The artist selection results. And I will turn it over to our assistant city manager. Thank you, Vice Chair Jenkins. Um, in front of you, we uh, Diane has uh, done a great job um, distributing the packets, collecting the packets, and calculating the point totals for the um, top 14 artists. And so I'll go through those really um, briefly with you. We have Carolyn Pelkey, uh, Carmela Hardy, Christina Bartel, Susan Marino, Carmela Hardy, Greg Wise, Christina Bartel, Carolyn Pelkey, Ashley Keen, Corinne Chan, Gina Singh, Katie Powers, Nicole McDaniel, and Jennifer Greger uh, received the top scores. There were two boxes that were included in the original um, call for artists that Public Works needed to pull for maintenance um, that wasn't necessarily anticipated. So we went ahead and added two additional boxes in. And then staff went through and um, considered the the first choice, second choice, th third choice, and the artwork, and then have the recommended um, locations to assign for the boxes. So the action that we're asking you to take tonight is to go ahead and approve the uh, results and authorize staff to begin the process of contacting the artists and working with uh, Mesa Art to develop the wraps and get the um, compensation out um, to the selected artists. I'm available for questions. Thank you. Anthony? Yes. Um, well, thank you very much um, for for all the effort um, that you put into it. And the the packets were so organized that even I could, even Mongo could get, get through the uh, scoring system. So I certainly appreciate that. <clears throat> when we went through in, in, in looking at the, um, the chosen artists, you know, we, I noticed that there are two, um, two artists that, um, have uh, multiple um, um, pieces. Um, when we did this last time, there was sort of a, a, a continuation of the list, a bullpen, if you will, of some artists that um, at, at that time that <clears throat> the discussion was um, some of the artists had two and three and, and <clears throat> We eliminated and, and reduced, uh, you know, the, some of those to one one per person, and I believe there were two artists that had two at that time. <clears throat> then at that time, moving in, moving up up two artists into the out of the bullpen and into to that area. I understand that the recommendation is for uh, you know for for approval, but I did want to just have the discussion and the notion um, about that notion of. Um, to see how the other commissioners feel about uh, an artist having multiple pieces. Um, and it, it is the information available to, to um, it, it, if, if decided to be able to move up. Um, I know that's not the easy thing to do. Um, I, I just want to bring it up as a, as a point of discussion as to <clears throat> sort of what happened with that, 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 I'm just calling it a bullpen. They were sort of um, in line, they were line items, but not assigned uh, uh, a, a location at that time. So number one, I would like to ask my fellow commissioners what their thoughts are about an artist having multiple um, uh, pieces, um, especially considering the amount of submissions. Um, and then second of all, the question probably would be posed to staff as is that uh, is information of those further artists that are first out, I guess, or first left off, uh, is that information uh, readily available? Commissioners? Well, that <clears throat> doesn't bother me that much because of the fact that it wasn't put out in the request for work and saying that you couldn't have more than one, and we have in the past. Mm -hmm. So I think to t change that at this point, 
we would then have to have had it out prior. But I have another question, so I'll come back to my question. I, I agree with both of you. Uh, ladies. That's me. I agree with both of you. When I was going through them, I thought this person's got multiple. Some have two or three thrown in there. And I thought this is not fair. Yeah. And, um, but then I agree if we, if we didn't state that at the beginning, you know, we're kind of stuck. Uh, I, I agree. I think we should give other people um, choices to mean, but it might be a little too late now. Yeah. So to me, the notion of having to state that it's one per customer is in essence is what, what we're, what, you know, one per, per, per artist entry that didn't preclude them or prohibit them from submitting multiple, um, uh, submissions. Um, <clears throat> I don't feel that it would be mandatory or that it's going around any, any stated process to, um, to choose, uh, a one location uh, or one piece per artist. Um, um, yeah, so that's 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 just my my two cents. I'm I, I again understand the uh, the shuffling and the locations and 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 all of those uh, you know the logistics that's involved in putting the process you know together and respect that, um, <clears throat> but. I, the notion that some people put in four and five, I, I just felt that that kind of played to, uh, you know, uh, buying more lotto tickets, beautiful lotto tickets. Um, but um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't. So anyways, for me, I don't believe that the notion that we didn't state that one person, um, uh, one, an artist could only be at one location. I don't think that that precludes us from choosing based on that. Because let, we didn't let me didn't. just um, remind the commission that we did have a discussion when um, the commission decided to compensate artists for these boxes that it was going to be per piece, not per artist. So I think that that uh, inherently a, implies that an artist may be awarded more than one box. I also, um, this package did go to the city council for blessing uh, for this process. So if it is the desire of the commission to um, have a discussion or to, to move in the direction of just awarding one uh, box per artist, I feel like I need to go back um, and have a discussion uh, with our city attorney and city manager if that's a significant change um, that um, we would need to uh that we could do or not do okay i happen to dis i have a different point of view on this if i had known that for instance the very first one she has two on there carolyn um if she could only have one then i would have put all of her submissions in a row and i would have graded it differently than i did because i graded them as to their quality of art and that was my criteria. If I'd known she could only have one, then I would have just rate one high and not the others. So I think changing the rules at this time creates some problems. Yeah, and you know, again, this is just a, a, a point of discussion. It was relative. I certainly understand that this was the the process was was discussed by us and obviously by by um, staff and, 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 and city council. So not trying to throw a wrench into the thing, just wanted to um, bring up that point. <clears throat> and again, I would just state the fact that if someone submitted five beautiful pieces, I, you know, a, going with this line of thought, if they were the five best pieces out of the 14, then someone, some artist could have five pieces out there and, the remaining would be so I, you know that that didn't occur thankfully it only occurred uh you know with a couple um uh, duplicate artists and that is what the the um the commission on the elaborate score sheet um you know chose as the best pieces of art independent of the artist's name so um you know uh 
it was an opportunity to discuss and put that out there. And thank you guys for your consideration. And most of all, um, you know, to you know, to staff and 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 to to council, um, you know, having approved the process and 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 making this uh, this public art a priority is is uh, is what is the point is what we're all about. So thanks for for listening to me. Thank you, Commissioner Small. I have one other question here. I wasn't involved in where they would be located because last time last time you did it and turned out just perfectly. And the first choice. First one and two are in the same place. So do you put one there? I'm just curious. And then you go over to their second and third choice? So, so as part of this process, we go through, look at the artist's choices, but also look at the piece of art. And to the best of our ability, if it jives with a certain area of town like if it's a monarch butterfly do we try to put that in monarch beach mm -hmm. so that kind of weighs in and artists you know tend to want everybody kind of wants one location or another location so we try to um see what we think would you know complement fit best in the neighborhood also what uh if there's a box near that box that's already been wrapped to not have too many of the same thing next to each other also um, comes into play. So we kind of look at every corner and figure out, you know, what's the artist's preference? Can we work with that? And if that location's already been, you know, taken by another artist or, um, you know, th there's some other issue in there. I mean, obviously we had two boxes that we had to remove, so we had to put another two in. So those are all the things we take into consideration. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the commissioners? No, I move that we accept uh, the uh, work that is being done with the recommended advice. Oh, sorry. I move that we accept the artwork proposal recommended by staff. Is there a second? No second. Yes. All in favor? Any discussion? She's going to ask right now. Okay. Commissioner Banks? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Small? Yes. Vice Chair Jenkins? By consensus, this motion passes 3 0. Move on to item three the Doheny Village mural and a call for artist update. And this is to be provided by the staff. Thank you, Vice Chair Jenkins. Um, the Doheny Village mural, as you recall, we discussed that. As part of the beautification plan for Doheny Village, there are a couple of murals planned in um, that area of town. We are working with one of the property owners of the uh, U.S. Post Postal Office building there on Doheny Park Road um, to do a call for artists for the mural uh, opportunity that his building presents. I have met with the building owner and have uh, provided the building owner a draft of a call for artists. Um, and I am awaiting comment um, from the building owner on that. Should he uh, be happy with the call for artists, we will go ahead and proceed with putting that out um, very soon, hopefully, and get that process started. So that is the status of uh, the call for artists for that mural. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the other commissioners? Okay. Yes, and uh, also I'm going to ask Kelly too to 
fit in today. Um, Commissioner Schnell and I have done a lot of work on this and unfortunately she's not here today. So I'm going to read over uh, a, a report. So we're at the uh, budget overview at this point. We've received two proposals from two artists, Mia Tavanotti, Nadi and Lance Jost, both who have done mo mosaic work, artwork in the uh, in Dana Point. This includes the cost of design, materials, labor, and installation for mosaic slash glass porcelain panels. On the front face of 118 steps of the, of the stairs, the to the total surface is 394 square feet. Initial estimates for this uh, portion of the project, material labor installation were as follows, 137,550 of 350 square uh, per square foot and $177,300 at 450 per square foot, which includes the cost of additional help from interns and helpers. So each one, the first one is from um uh Lance and the second one was from uh Mia Maya and but this does not include the cost of you know the cost of the landscaping and then there's going to be an adjustment to the steps because you can't just put them on there you have to finish the top of the step the surface and we still need to explore a lot of the other options and we have final proposals with scope of the project and cost of the project um, and timing. So, uh, plus we need to explore options on funding and grants and sponsors, which Maya is really good at that and we're, we're all looking into that. Um, Kelly had a meeting yesterday with Karen, so I'm going to let her, cause I had my operation and I couldn't meet. So Kelly, take it away. Thank you. Um, so yeah, Karen and I had a discussion about the the proposals they received really were just for kind of um, ballpark scoping of what a square foot, you know, for this kind of project would cost. I think there's still questions about how much time it would take to do something like this. Obviously those stairs are, you know, a, a popular, um, you know, highly used feature in town. So minimizing the amount of time that's impacted to the public with a project like this still needs to be explored. Um, if there's preparation that has to do with that. And then as I understand it, these costs also include design costs, which obviously as part of the process would need to um, take place where obviously several different designs would be contemplated, presented, uh, input would be received, all of that uh, process would need to take place. So I think a timeline is still yet to really be developed that encompasses all of those things. I think um, as far as costs are concerned, currently there's $246,000 in the Arts and Public Places account. And, um, you know, obviously this this project, you know, is, is a larger project. And so I think, um, you know, bringing together folks that might be good at finding um, potential funding sources to support it would be important so that um, there's funds available in the account beyond this project to, you know, accomplish um, other pursuits by the commission, you know, such as like our third phase of getting the utility boxes done and that sort of thing. Uh, so that's kind of where things are at. I think there was some good former progress here by the subcommittee and really kind of at least getting kind of a ballpark cost um, on what this type of artwork, um, you know, would, would entail. So that's all um, I have to add at this yeah, time. Yeah, we're definitely looking into funding. Uh, I even thought of getting the whole community involved and have a, a GoFundMe type towards the stairs. I mean, there's a lot because it is expensive. And it is, it, it, we're going to have to do a little bit more research and, and we're also looking at grants. Mm -hmm. So definitely we'll, it's, we're excited about it. And anybody have any questions or comments? Um, yeah. So, so is there, is, is, 
am I missing the attachment of that initial ballpark quote or was that not meant not to be attached? Sure. There's no staff report um, for that. I think that was just uh, in information to be shared. Yeah. The only reason th that I ask for uh, if that was to be attached is because it becomes <clears throat> a part of the record and then you can see the evolution of the quotes. So um, um, something to consider as the process evolves, you know, throughout the, the well, this kind of states where we're at at the at the present time. And there is so much more as you, you know. R right. So it states where we're at at the present we, time, but it it's does. not sh shared with other than than. Um, locally. Go ahead. These were not formal proposals solicited by the city. I think these were um, trying to get a general per square foot cost just so that there was some frame of reference of what it would cost. But certainly there was not a, a formal process by which we were procuring uh, quotes for a, like, you know, this, this project. This was informational. Right. Thank you very much. That concludes our report. Thank you. Uh, so this is really to um, give the commissioners a heads up that we'll be looking to have a special meeting toward the end of July. Uh, the city council will be conducting uh, interviews to fill the two vacancies on the commission uh, at the June 15th meeting. Um, once those commissioners are selected, uh, we will probably conduct a special meeting in July to uh, partake in a reorganization of the Arts and Culture Commission for you know chair and vice chair, and then um, potentially form the Doheny Village Mural Ad Hoc Subcommittee. I, I'm hoping that we'll be uh, along in that process. And then I believe there is some additional um, ethics training that will be due for some commissioners that will probably also try to fit in. So um, toward the end of July is, is when we are envisioning having this commission meeting and we will be, um, if you uh, could please turn in any vacation schedules that you have um, to me after the meeting, that would be helpful in our uh, scheduling purposes. Thank you. Commissioner Banks? Yes. Commissioner Small? Yes. Vice Chair Jenkins? Yes. By consensus, this motion passes 3-0. Anthony, we're going to miss you. Uh, commissioner, from March 2017 to until June 2021, Dana Point's Times columnist for Dana Point Rocks. He's also accomplished organizing a distinct level for Capistrano Unified District Reflections Art prog Program. Anthony has been named to California as the Arts and Council Grant Review Panel. He's earned a certificate in the arts management from UC Irvine and co-founded the music history nonprofit Music Preserves Foundation. The Music Preserves Foundation creates an educational program and curriculum about American music and the pioneers who created the art forms, providing online enrichment, enrichment programs through the distinct and creating artist spotlight. Anthony 
a musician and vocalist in Small World Band, you are supported. You are a supporter of the music festival's Dana Point welcomes annually, helping students have experiences with major artists, which provide inspiration and encouragement of the musical pursuits. On behalf of the commission, we thank you for all the time and hard work you have put into to move arts program forward in Dana Point. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Commissioner Banks. And I'd like to turn it over to our assistant city manager, Kelly Renders. I can't. Anthony, I just want to say it's been such a pleasure having you as a commissioner. You have been so wonderful to work with, and we are so lucky here in Dana Point that you are such a longtime resident as well for 23 years. Is that right? And, um, you know, while um, we say goodbye to you tonight on the commission, I think um, there is much that beholds of the future in working with you and your foundation and uh, this community in future endeavors here in Dana Point. And so I think um, from a staff perspective, we're, we're looking forward to working with you um, on the outside and, uh, you know, uh, finding some things to do here in town that will really um, move the community forward. And, and uh, as we know how much this community enjoys music, uh, we, we uh, can't wait to work with you. And I'll turn it over to you for comments. And then I would like to present you with your tile in the well. Okay, I'm looking for my for my hanky. Um, um, <clears throat> yeah, um, I have. Uh, let me have just one moment, please. <clears throat> uh, thank you, commissioners, for you know for your your kind words and your guidance um, and your encouragement uh, and your hard work and. <clears throat> um, Vice Commissioner Jenkins has been uh, instrumental and an example to me <clears throat> about being an, uh, uh, how to be an arts advocate um, since before I was on the commission. So um, I appreciate that. And um, although she, you know, she couldn't be here. Uh, um, today because she's she's not feeling well. <clears throat> I have to thank uh, to thank Karen Schnell, Commissioner Schnell, <clears throat> for that same guidance. Um, and um, she made so many great recommendations to me, including the um, the recommendation uh, to um, to go for my. Uh, my certificate in arts management from you from uci she she presented that opportunity to me and um and it was it was life-changing it was really something that you know i've um city council also thank you so much um as you can see i mean as you guys already know that this means the world to me um and and I've, I've I've built my life around about uh, around arts and culture because of the opportunity um, that that council gave to me and um, as uh, as assistant city manager. Kelly Renders uh, stated this, uh, which which makes me feel even more sillier for being so emotional because I do not feel that this is the is the end. It's just uh, you know, kind of. Uh, I just love being a part of the commission, and 
but I, I truly feel like there are some fantastic programs um, and other ways that I can be of service and hopefully of even more service to the community that I love so much. Um, um, you know, with, <clears throat> with the COVID uh, that everyone, you know, the, that everyone's had to deal with, I just feel that the arts are, are such a pathway to, uh, to healing and return to normalcy. And, um, and there's such a desire for those programs. Um, <clears throat> and, um, Yeah, I'm just, um, my grandfather used to say, because I'd say, I'd say, you know, when, when we'd arrive or leave and, and he would cry, uh, and I'd say, Wolito, don't cry, you know, and, and he'd say, my heart's just so full, it spills over, and uh, it's not uh it's, it's not professional, but, uh, you know, I just, I, lo I just love this, uh, this commission and, uh, and the community and, um, and the staff, um, you know, you guys, everyone has been so, so encouraging. I'm, I'm just so proud of our community and um, and so grateful forever, grateful to uh, to have been given the opportunity to, to serve on this commission. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Schmall. I'm gonna miss you. Yeah. We. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're all supposed to put just him. Mm -hmm. So we still have another couple of agendas items to work on, so don't oh. leave us permanently yet. Yeah. <clears throat> um, they, we have an arts and cultural commission reports. And may I start with Commissioner Banks? I do have one. Okay. Um, I have two tonight simply because, well, yeah, I'll go back to him. I was going to leave him for last. <laughs> leave the best for last, you heard? Anyway, um, the reason I have two is because Commissioner uh, Schnell came over to my house at four o'clock and she handed me a report. So this is her comment. And it is. Announcing the Dana Point Symphony Concert on June 11th, this Friday, at 2021. And um, please come and join us. Uh, they will be performing for a live audience in a free concert event at the Kaleidoscope in Mission Viejo on Friday, June 11th at 7.30. The concert is free to attend. However, we encourage the supporters to give generously by sending a donation using the link provided. RSVP seating is available as well and highly recommended as courtyard seating is limited. The concert is the most momentous event. It is the first time that our beloved orchestra will perform during the pan pandemic crisis. <coughs> <laughs> That's hit all of our communities so hard. We want to celebrate by performing beautiful and joyous music by Dvorak, Debussy, Weber, and many other popular classical hits. 
And then the one that I wanted to report on, I was at another meeting in the city, and somebody there asked, how are the statues in Waterman Park? I think now that the pandemic's about ready to go, do we have anything on the agenda? And it was a community input to recognize uh, Severson and Joyce Hoffman, since those are the two that are finished now. Mm -hmm. uh, John Severson has been installed and we did have a very small gathering with their family um, to uh, recognize that installation. The Joyce Hoffman statue is not finished yet. And so um, we're hoping that will be finished early fall and we will be having a um, celebration at that time. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh you didn't have any? Small. Commissioner Small. Yes. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't have really have anything to add. I just, uh, with a little bit of composure now at this at this point, I, I want to to say thanks. Thanks again. Thank you guys for your 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 guidance and and um, your direction and your passion for the arts and uh, and it lit it lit that fire uh, for me. So thank you. Thank you. Staff report. I have a few reports tonight. So our movies in the park have started uh, Friday nights here in June. Please uh, go out 8 p.m. Lantern Bay Park. We'll be starting our summer concert series on July 18th. So that's Sundays and uh, Sunday afternoons. So please join us for that in Sea Terrace Park. And then we were contacted by OC Symphony and they are doing a um, series uh, called Symphony on the Go. So it's Pacific Symphony's mobile community concert experience that's touring throughout Orange County. And they basically pull up a mobile stage um, by truck and um, can pull up and do a 45 minute concert. And so we have secured two dates for that. Uh, we will be having July 14th, 7 p.m. at Pines Park and August 11th, 7 p.m. at Sea Canyon Park. And so we'll be getting more information about uh, that, but um, we're pretty pretty excited that we will have these um, free symphony events in two of those in our parks this summer. So more to come. And I uh, just like to remind everybody as well that the trolleys are running, and ridership's really important for us to maintain our grant to run the trolleys. So please hop on the trolleys this weekend. And the Chamber of Commerce has a hop and shop, so there are discounts. Uh, at stores and restaurants for riding the trolley. So we encourage everybody to do that. Thank you. The next regular meeting of the Arts and Cultural Commission will be held on Wednesday, September 8, 2021 at 6 p.m. in the City Council Chamber located at 33282 Golden Lantern, Dana Point, California. And we are adjourned at 6.54.